in Jesus' name, Father God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this whole day in this conference. I stir up the apostolic and the prophetic anointing that's in each and every one of us today, Father God, in Jesus' name. And just let it be to edify and encourage and comfort the hearers, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you here, everybody? Yep, we are fine now, Pastor Sean. Thank you. Okay. Um, so just uh, real quick, um, for those of you who don't know, I am Pastor Sean, and I'm the assistant pastor of Covenant Life Church, and our pastors is um, Apostle Dr. Linda Herbert and Apostle Jeff Herbert, and we're going to, um, this is the start of this prophetic conference, um, and I'm going to start off by saying why prayer is important. And just to give you just, I'm just going to go with, uh, with what I know uh, with scriptures, because that's a topic that you can, you can discuss for years and years about where prayer is important. Um, one of the things that um, I can start off saying is that um, the reason why, one of the reasons why prayer is important, because it gives heaven access to intervene on our behalf. In other words, when you pray to heaven, uh, what you're doing is you, you're giving heaven access to intervene on, 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 on what we're praying to God. So um, I'm just going to st start. You can write down these scriptures. Um, so I'm just going to go by scriptures because I just have a 30-minute time window in increment. So I'm going to start off in Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, starting in verse 12, says, now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose 12 whom he also named apostles. Now, why is that important? Um, it's important because one of the things that if you're reading the scriptures, it, it, it does not say, and I could be wrong, it does not say anywhere where Jesus and, the, and his disciples prayed together. And the reason why I say that, because Jesus, before he did anything, he always went before God by himself to pray. So because, and the ultimate goal was that is to, because Jesus always, always had ma maintained an intimate relationship with the Father. And so as we are uh, talking about why it's important to pray, we should always know that, that uh, we should always go into a place um, the Bible calls it a secret place where we should always go to pray, to have an intimate relationship with God. And we should always do it for ourselves first. And if you notice, um, it says that after he prayed in verse 13, he said, and when it was day. So the Bible says he prayed all night. And so if Jesus, who was all God and all man, prayed all night, then we don't have no excuse that, that, that we can't pray. Okay. And the Bible says that he called his disciples after he prayed all night. And, and then after that, the Bible says, if you drop down to verse 17, the Bible says that after he prayed and chose his disciples, he was able to heal a great multitude. Verse 17 says, and he, Luke 6, 17, and he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, verse 18, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And verse 19 says, and the whole multitude sought to, sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. So we have to understand that a lot of time, some one of the reasons why that we're not seeing signs, signs one is a miracle is because we are not praying and we're not seeking God and getting the download and getting the, the, the uh, download from God and, and seeking that intimate relationship with God before we seek the signs, wonders, and miracles. We cannot seek signs, wonders, and miracles without prayer and without having an intimate relationship with him. And, and you see that in Luke, how Jesus prayed all night. Then he chose his disciples. Then you saw the great healing of the great multitude. So we have to understand that number one is that we need to pray so we can get the download from God, so we can get that instruction from God, so we can get 
get get the the the, the proper vision and a proper um, what to to get what whatever God instructs us to do, and that's what Jesus was doing. So we can hear and obey His voice, and then then when we have that going, then after that we know that we can perform the signs, wonders, and miracles because we've spent time with God. Because so if we don't spend time with God in prayer, then therefore we can't expect things like the signs, wonders, and miracles to happen. Um, so as we go on, turn. You can turn with me to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. And Mark chapter 6, verses 45. And this is, you know, the familiar story about Jesus walking on the sea. It says, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethesda, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. So, uh, so we can stop right there. You have to understand that 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 because Jesus always had um, a lifestyle of prayer, he had instruction, and so he 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 made his disciples get into the boat and go into the other side. And so we have to understand that 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 prayer is, is something that that's important because it gives us the instructions about what to do next. And God is a God who's always moving forward, and He always gives us instructions about what to do next. And and here Jesus knew His purpose. Je Jesus knew that that this was a time where He He instructed them that that we are to go. He told the disciples that we are to go to the other side. And a lot of times we want answers to questions and answers to things and answer to things that, that, that we don't have an answer to. And, but when we pray, God will give us that, that peace to say, well, I need you to, it, it could be something as simple as I don't need you to, to make that left. When you go to work, I may, you, I may need you to go to the right today. It could be, um, I don't want you to look at this house. I want you to look at this house. It could be uh, something as simple as um, I don't want you to 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 put on this shirt. I want you to put on this shirt because in this meeting, or you may have an interview for a job, and and this shirt that may be the exact shirt shirt that that, that impressed the interviewer. Something as small as that. And a lot of times, what what was happening here in verse forty seven, it says now when it, when evening came. The boat was in the multi was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining and rowing, for the wind was against them. Now, about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost, and cried out, and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said to them, "Be of good cheer; it is I. Do not be afraid." Then, the, then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled, for they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. Okay, you have to understand. And another thing, prayer keeps you from keeping your heart to be hardened, because a lot of times what happens is that when we don't pray, that allows the enemy to come in and to get other thoughts that's that that's not the thoughts of God. And so as you continue to pray, that keeps your mind focused on God. The scripture says that this that this same mind being you that's in Christ Jesus. So when we continue to pray, when we put our focus on God, then He will give us the instructions and the download. And then we can go and do things without fear because we know that God is with us. The Bible says if God is for us, no man can be against us. So if that's if so if because that's in the scripture, then we know when we go to God in confidence, then, then we know He hears us, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, let's go to Luke 22, Luke chapter 22, and again, um, you can write all these scriptures down, and please look them up later. Uh, we talk about why prayer is important. Luke chapter 22. Uh, starting, let's look at, um, let's look at 46. 
this was uh, when he was in the prayer of of God, and when he was in a, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and this is when he 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 said that he was he was in agony, and, and we know the story about he said that Father, if if it was your will, take this cup away from me. Verse forty two. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. And we know the story about he was praying so much that that his sweat became like blood to the ground. Then verse 45 says, when he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep, wise and pray, unless you enter into, unless you enter into temptation? In other words, what he was saying is that we should always be in a mode of prayer because we always know that, that, that the enemy will try to bring temptation to do wrong and temptation to think or to, to to think not God's thoughts or to not do things as long as but but are we in a in um in a situation where we're sleeping instead of praying and we, we can always be put in the wrong mindset or we can always be in in, in sort of like a, a wrong place at that time where we need to be praying. The disciples were sleeping when when, when they should have been praying. So Jesus understood about about prayer and we cannot let our flesh control our spirit our spirit must must always be the the one that's in charge of our flesh and how do how do we get our spirit in charge of our flesh it's by prayer and so he said that why do you sleep rise and pray that you enter into temptation verse 46 so another reason why prayer is important is so we can get our flesh under control and so our spirit can be in control of and and give us divine direction about what to do and about where to go in 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 doing our purpose and doing our vision okay so everybody hear me so far everybody's good okay uh first john let's go to first john i intimated about that first john And these are scriptures that, that you're probably familiar with, but it's good to go over them. First John chapter five, uh, starting at verse 14, it says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So again, we can stop there and says that when you pray according to this will, according to his will with his word, he says, this is the confidence that we have. So when you pray according to his will, which is according to his word, you, you have the confidence. He says that when you pray according to his will, which is where he hears us. And verse 15 says, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So his will is his word. So in other words, if, if, if you know that his will is to, hear, is, is to heal us, then we pray according to his word by the stripes of Jesus, he is healed. If we know that that his his will is to uh, prosper, as we know that, that that the Bible says, "Beloved, I pray above all things that we may prosper and be in health, even as our soul prosper." We know that that he redeems us. Psalms one hundred seven says he redeemed us from from the hand of the enemy, and so we know that that his 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 will is to redeem us. His will is to deliver us. That's in his word. So when we pray according to his word we can have the confidence that he will hear us and he will answer us. So a lot of times what happens is that we, we can pray out of a state of emotion instead of a state of his will, okay? And we need to be careful not to pray out of emotion, but to pray his word. Because the Bible says in Psalms 138 that he magnified his word above his name, okay? So he is bound by his word. So as we pray according to his word, he hears us, okay? So that's so so that's the most important thing why prayer is important. And, and prayer can and when we pray according to this word, then we know that it can be exciting time and not a mundane thing. Most of the time when because people think prayer is boring because they don't they don't pray according to his word. And when when you don't pray according to his word, then then the enemy can come in and then you can think that you're running out of things to pray. But in actuality, you're never running out of things to pray when you pray according to your word and when you pray according to in, according to the spirit of God, when you speak in tongues. And I'm going to get to that in, in one second. 
uh, Psalms, go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Psalms 103, it says, bless, verse 1, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities or sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Verse 6 says, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed, and he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. So once again, you have to understand that when we pray according to his word, the, 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 the Bible says that, that, that he has benefits for, for all those who pray according to his word, and his benefits, like he says, he says, he says, forget not, verse, verse 2 says, I like when it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, not all his benefits. Well, what is, is his benefits? His benefits is that he's forgiven us from all our sin. His benefits is that he heals us from all our diseases. His benefits is that he's redeemed our life from destruction. His benefits is that he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. His benefits is that he satisfies our mouth with good things. His benefits is that is that he renews our youth like the eagle. His benefits is that he executes righteousness and he and, and for us and justice for all those who are oppressed. If we are impressed with anything, we know we can pray according to his word. And the Bible says he executes righteousness. And the, and the Bible says that as we pray, the Bible says he made known his ways to Moses. That was in the Old Testament. Well, now, because we are in the New Testament of grace, the Bible says that, that, that he can make his way known to us. Because we are in the New Testament, and the Bible says that we are under, in, under, under a better covenant, um, under better promises. And the, and the Bible says that we are new. We we are new covenant ministers under the new covenant. So therefore, when we pray, um, we know that that we can pray according to His Word. And anything that that's coming against us, we know that we can pray that that God avenges that that God will avenge us of anything that, that that's been done to us wrong. And we don't have to take revenge, but we know the word says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will repay. And the word says and, and that he will give justice to all those who were oppressed. Okay. And then he makes us, uh, he will make his ways known to us. So again, we know that when we pray, we know that we can pray and God has benefits for the people who prays. Okay. So as we continue, and I know I'm, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to, Isaiah. 9-7, go to Isaiah 9-7, the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Very familiar scriptures, but it's good to go over them. And we know this is familiar scripture about the uh, prophetic uh, word concerning uh, Jesus coming into the world. So Isaiah 9 starting at six says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the increase of his government and and peace there will be no end upon the throne of david and upon his kingdom in order and upon over his kingdom to order it and establish it with just judgment and justice for the time forward even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So again, we have to understand that prayer gives us, is, is, is more than just saying words. Prayer gives us a legal right to go before the throne of God to ask God to perform his word. So we have to understand, so you know, the verse seven, I like verse seven where it says of the increase of his government. So we have to understand the kingdom of God is his government. Then he says, of the crease of his government and peace, there will be no end. Then he says, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from the time forward, even forever. So we have to understand that when we are praying, 
we we have a legal right to go before God according to His Word to ask God um, and to to ask God and tell God according to His Word um, about the petitions. It's called the prayer petition. A lot of people say so. When we do a prayer petition, we're petitioning God on our behalf according to His Word. Okay. So while we in Isaiah, go to Isaiah forty three. Isaiah 43, and we talk about that legal right to petition God according to his word. Isaiah 43, verse 25, it says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions or sin for, for my own sake, and I, and I will not remember your sins. Now, verse 26, it says, put me in remembrance. So what, what God is saying is that put him in remembrance of his word. So we have a right to go to God and put him remembrance of his word and say, God, this is what you said. The prophetic word that you gave me, this is what you said. You said in your word that you would do blah, 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 blah. So he says, put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Or oh, that word acquitted means justified. So in other words, he's saying, put me in remembrance of your word state your cases just like a lawyer in the courtroom when he has to state his case before a judge he has to give a plea now that plea could be guilty that plea could be not guilty that or whatever well it's the same thing god is saying put me in remembrance of your word let us contend together state your case that you may be acquitted or justified when you state your case when you state your case according to the word the bible says that when you state your case that you may be justified or acquitted, okay? So understand that prayer is, 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 is a legal term that's given us the right to go before God and to plead before him and to, and, and to state our case according to the word of God, okay? So as we go on, uh, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, it says, uh, verse 23 says, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. O Lord, correct me, but with justice. So here we go with justice again, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. So in other words, he's saying that He's saying that is it is not us that 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 is doing that, that, that it is not us that 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 is doing it's God in us that is giving us the answers to our prayers. And so he's saying that, O oh Lord, correct me, but with justice, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. So in other words, what he was saying is that God correct me in in the word of God and, and correct me according to your word. And so, in other words, prayer is a way where God can can correct us on some things that 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 He feels that we're going the wrong way. If if He is, the Bible says that in Hebrews that He chastises those who He loves. So, in other words, when when we go to God in prayer, we we give God permission to correct us, and so He can correct us, and we can hear and obey His voice, so He can put us on the right track. If we're going the wrong way. If we're, if we're doing things that, 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 that is displeasing, then, then, then we can ask God to, and God can, we, we get permission for God to correct us in the way so he can put us on the right track, okay? It's just the same way how David said in Psalms, in, um, where he said, search my heart, search my intents and correct me. He said, search, search my mind, search my, my, my ways and search my intent. If there's been, ev if, if there's been ev any evil way, um, take it away. Well, let's go there real quick since, since I'm quoting that. Psalms, um, Psalms, 30, Psalms 139, verses 23. David said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxiety. Verse 24, and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So when we pray, we, we give God, we give God that, that, that permission to say, search me search all of me and to put me on the right direction. 
that's why a prayer of repentance is so important. Where when we're praying, you should always go to God with an attitude of repentance because we don't know what we did wrong the following day. You know, Apostle Dr. Lena always talks about, you know, there, there's a, a you know, we, we do things out of omission and commission. So we don't know what, what we did or, or, or done some things that, that may have displeased God. So when we go to God in prayer, we can go with a prayer of repentance so we can get our heart right so God can speak to us and lead us on that right track, okay? Let's go to Matthew chapter 12. I don't know how my time is, is doing. I think I got about five minutes. Uh, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And again, please write these scriptures down and go over them. Uh, Matthew chapter 12. And this is when, okay, this is when he was quoting verse, uh, let's start at verse Matthew 12, 15. He says, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew with men. And this is when um, they were talking about um, how he healed this man on the Sabbath day. And they was questioning him about, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And Jesus said that, uh, verse 11, what man is there among you who has one sheep, and if it falls into the pit on the Sabbath, will not, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Verse 12, of how much more value than, than is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And then, of course, he, he, healed, he told the man to stretch out a hand and heal them. Then verse 15, it says, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there and great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. Yet he warned them not to make him known that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. Again, there's that word justice. Verse 19, he will not crawl nor cry out nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised weed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench till he sends forth justice to victory, and his name Gentiles will trust. And again, again, what he was saying is that he, it, that, that was a prophetic word through Isaiah talking about um, Jesus when he comes in. And, and you have to understand that, that he will give, he's talking about giving the Gentiles justice. He's talking about that, there will be people who will not hear him, but he, but he says that we hear him because we have his spirit inside of us. And that was a prophetic word saying that we have the spirit of God inside of us, that we will hear the voice of God in prayer. And he was saying that, um, um, that prayer, so what I'm saying is that prayer is important so we can uh, hear the voice of God. We can, we can understand that there are three voices that, that are constantly trying to talk to us, and that's God's voice our flesh's voice and the devil's voice. And then when we pray according to the word and when we continue to pray and we establish relationship, we can understand that we will get to know um, his voice uh, amidst our other voices, which is the flesh and the enemy. So because the spirit inside of us now, is, it, it, he was talking about how uh -huh. now that, that, that the Jews, that, that the Jews will get to a point where they didn't hear him so then he went to the Gentiles because he knew the Gentiles was going to hear him. And because we have the voice of God in us, then therefore, then therefore we can hear him and therefore we can know him. And the Bible says, if you, Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So we have to understand that because we have the Holy Spirit in us, then we can go and we can hear and obey his voice. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. So are we. Yep, your time to wrap up, up now. Sean, you want to close in prayer for us, please? Thank I you. I sure will. Good job. Amen. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for, for your word. I just thank you, Lord, for prayer, Father God. And I just praise you and honor you, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for what, you, what, what you're doing so far in this conference, Father God. Continue to teach us the importance of prayer. Continue to teach us the importance of seeking your face, Father God. And Father God, we just thank you once again, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for, for, for just allowing us to, 
to, to just seek you and all that we do, Father God, allowing us to, to go before your, your throne, Father God, with confidence and with boldness, Father God. I thank you, Father God, as we pray according to your word. Your word says that you hear us and you will give us the petitions that, that we desired of you. So we just thank you and we just honor you today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, for what you're doing. And we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen.